Is PlayStation View the best streaming service? Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Spencer. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel. If this is your first time stopping by, let me just say I really appreciate it. What I try to do here is look at all things tech through a real world lens. Now that basically means looking at how these devices and services affect you day to day, rather than getting lost in the specs and technical details. So today we're looking at PlayStation View. Time codes is always down in the description. We're going to look at the packages offered by the service, which we're on that screen right now. We're going to talk about the streaming quality. We're going to talk about the UI on web, TV, and mobile, and end with my conclusions. So as you can see here, I jumped right to the core package, $59.99 a month. Big things here are I get my NFL network, my wife gets her food network, and we're met with a UI similar to what we get on DirecTV now. Channels that are included are highlighted, channels that aren't are grayed out, and we do also get local channels, which is a big advantage over something like Slim. As you can see there, we jump all the way to their most expensive package, everything's highlighted. Down here at the bottom, standalone channels, HBO, Showtime. Prices seem pretty consistent with the rest of the industry, so nothing out of the ordinary there. But this here's the big one, the sports pack, Fox Sports, NFL Red Zone included, all for just 10 bucks a month. I mean, that's that seems like a pretty solid deal to me. When I reviewed this service, I had the core package, 50 bucks a month, as well as NFL Red Zone. So $60 a month is the standpoint that I'm coming from. Jumping over to streaming quality, and for that, we're gonna have to go ahead and fire up a channel. We'll just pick this one, some college football. This is also the UI that you'll get anything that you're watching on, uh, on the web, and down here at the bottom you can see here we go for streaming quality now what I'll say is when you first fire up a channel you'll probably get a little bit of buffering right off the bat which is to be expected on any streaming service that's pretty consistent for me now unlike sling once the quality gets locked in once the channels locked in for a few seconds it shouldn't buffer at all throughout your entire watching experience now down here we get auto high def and standard def that's what HD and SD stand for and Sony doesn't give us any explanation of what these actual resolutions are so we just have to assume that they're actually standard and high def. Standard definition, and this is going to get a little bit technical, but bear with me, I'm going to try to keep it simple because I do think this is really important and a lot of people in the tech industry just kind of gloss over it entirely. So standard definition is 480p. High definition is 720p. Now, if you currently have cable, your cable box might say something like 720i or 1080i, and we'll get to that here in just a second. But these numbers are relevant because full HD is 1080p, and most of you probably have 1080p TVs like I do, maybe even a 4K TV or monitor. Again, the perspective I'm coming from, I have 1080p TVs, and I have 1440p or 2K monitors. 2K is defined as 2 times 720. So 720 times 2 is 1440, right? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so anyway, that's the perspective I'm coming from. Now, I mentioned we get back to this. If you have 1080i or 720i on your cable box, what your cable box is basically doing is taking a 480p signal in from the wall and it's upscaling that to 1080 probably looks fine to you, but if you ever see a TV side by side, one's 1080i, one's 1080p, you'll be able to tell a difference. I sold TVs at HH Craig in high school and college for a little bit. I mean, HH Craig's obviously out of business now, so it's a few years ago. I got to see these differences firsthand, and you can definitely tell. If you have something like DirecTV, not DirecTV now, but actual DirecTV with the satellite dish, then you're streaming in 1080p. The reason this is relevant, tying it all back in, why I just threw that little definition there, is if you currently have cable and you're on 720i or 1080i, then going from that to 720p is probably not that big a deal. Like I mentioned, I'm on a 1440p monitor right now. My TVs are 1080p, and I haven't had any complaints with the quality, so I wouldn't let that scare you off. I'd at least give it a shot. And jumping back over here, you can see you do get a five-day free trial to at least give the service a shot. So that's the streaming quality. No complaints there. Once the quality is locked in, it does pretty solid. So looking at the UI now on the web, and again next we'll do TV and then end with mobile. On the web you get this little carousel here, things that are currently trending. Probably going to vary a little bit depending on where you live because cash explosion and you know the news are obviously local to me here. Then you get a bunch of different categories of different things going on which is pretty consistent with what you've seen if you've seen other streaming services. One thing I do like, one nice touch, it'll say, you know, if it's new, it'll give you that little new thing in yellow. It'll also tell you if it's available on demand. And that's consistent throughout the UI here. Now, this little box, this is also pretty consistent. It might look kind of funny if you're not used to the service. This is the icon for DVR. So for instance, if I click that on Jimmy Kimmel, added it to my DVR right there, and it's just as easy to take it away. Remove it from my DVR. There we go. So that's the home screen here. DVR, I don't DVR a whole lot. You do get the service included for free, the DVR service. So that's a nice little add-in. And then finally, these three toggles up here all kind of do the same thing in a different way. So if we hit channels, just gives you a list of all the channels in alphabetical order, and it'll tell you what's playing. So college football there, uh, puppy dog pals on Disney Junior. 
that sort of thing. Now, you, what you can also do is favorite channels. I mentioned Red Zone's big for me, Food Network's big for my wife. So you can favorite channels just by adding a little heart to them, makes them easier to access. Live TV, I have not used this tab at all. My guess is it mixes things that are trending with the other TV in alphabetical order, but you know, I'm not, I'm not really sure because there's no rhyme or reason here. Here we've got C and then an N and then a C. So yeah, I'm not really sure what this tab is doing there and I've never used it personally. Now over here on the guide, the guide, and we're gonna park here for a second as well. This is kind of weird. I mean, I could get used to it. It's just gonna be kind of weird if you've never used it before. So on the guide, you get the channels in alphabetical order. Your favorite channels are put there on the left, right, front, and center, which I like a lot. And those will stay there as long as they apply to this category you've selected. So here we've got all channels. You'll see if we move to sports, Food Network disappears because it's obviously not a sports channel. So I like that part about the guide. Now scrolling up and down, I mean, if you're used to, again, a cable guide or anything like that, you'd see the, the TV name over here, the channel name, and the time at the top. This is reversed. So if we scroll, we get different time codes. And then up here, if we use these arrow keys, we get different channels. Now, I guess credit where it's due, what'll happen is it'll scroll, you know, a whole new list of channels per screen. So here we've got Destination America. That's the last channel that we can see there. We click the arrow, no Destination America. Discovery is the next channel there. So it jumps through a bunch at a time. It's just, just kind of weird. It takes a little bit of getting used to. Up here at the top, I do like this little drop down. We can choose between the time and data we're looking at. That's a nice little touch. Just the guide here is a little bit, a little bit weird, but you know, hey, like I said, I'm sure you can get used to it because I know that I could. Now, as far as channels itself and the UI when you're actually watching content on the web, we'll click chopped here. If you click it just to make sure you didn't misclick, it pulls up this little menu here. Again, add it to the DVR or play. If we click play, we get the option to watch it live or start it from the beginning. And that's relevant for any TV show, basically. And to show you what I mean, if we do the same thing with a uh, college basketball game that's live sports, we don't have the option to rewind that to the beginning there. So it works for TV shows, not live sports, which again, is pretty consistent through any streaming service that I've tried personally. Now, when you're actually watching some content here, you get the option to rewind or fast forward again where applicable. And when you sign up, PlayStation View actually says, hey, we wanna keep a log, keep track, keep data basically, from the last 30 minutes of TV that you've watched. And they do that so that you can uh, fast forward and rewind and even pause live TV. So for example, I gotta get up and go to the bathroom. I can pause the game. Nice little touch there. Down here at the bottom, you obviously get your volume controls, the control on quality, which we've already talked about, and then captions if you want them. You can make the video go full screen down here in the bottom right. Or what I also like is down here, you can make the window float. So you can float it, you can kind of move it around the TV or the screen wherever you want, whatever corner you want, it does kind of have to sit in the corner. And then if you want to close it down, you can hit that X there. One thing I really liked about DirecTV Now, if you guys watched that video, is your content would keep playing in the background while you had the guide pulled up. Not the case here, but that floating window is, you know, it's good enough, I guess. And then if you want to get rid of it, you just hit that little X right there. Up here on the top right, last little thing, you can search for any TV show or even channel that you're looking for. And then you get your settings up here top right. Nothing too out of the ordinary here yeah much more important on the TV and on mobile which we'll get to here in just a second so that's been the UI on the web how about on the TV and guys right up front I apologize for the quality here if you've ever tried to take a video of a TV screen you know what I'm talking about this video is not gonna look good at all but I'm trying to show off the UI to let you know what it looks like and I don't know how to screen record on my TV because I can't <laughs> so here we go launching it up from an Apple TV and PlayStation view app this is what you get met with as soon as you log in it'll tell you what channel you're currently watching it has this little nice home tab as you can see there top left you can hit the play or pause key in order to clear that menu which is a nice touch that stays consistent on Apple TV TV or even Roku. And then when you hit the back key, let's rewind here just for a second. When you hit the back key, it pulls up this menu and it also gives you access to hit the up arrow and get to these menus up there at the top. Now you arrow over to guide and it looks just like it does on the web, which good or bad, take your pick. It's definitely different. You can just go up and down to adjust things during the time. And then you scroll left and right to see new channels, but on the TV, it just goes one channel at a time. So again, from that menu, hit the back button. You can see we've got this highlighted now. You can search things for a different date if you wanted to but it also gives you access to hit the up key again and then get access to that menu if you do go all the way home you'll have your favorite channels there if you want as well as recently watched and trending live dvr etc and the content that you were watching will stay there while this menu pops up over it but that only happens on the home tab as you'll see here in a second i'm going to jump back to guide and that content that was going on in the background is now gone not necessarily good not necessarily bad it is definitely a preference thing i'd prefer that it kept playing but you know it's something that you can definitely get used to so that's been the guide on the TV and the UI on the TV. Next, we're gonna look at what it looks like on a mobile device.
All right, guys, so here's PlayStation View on mobile. You get this little carousel at the top, and I think it's just recommended content. You can turn it off if you want, which I'll show you in just a second. Outside of that, the rest of the stuff looks pretty normal, right? Trending TV, DVR, favorite channels, etc. Pretty normal stuff there. You can also customize this if you want. So if you just want sports, you're like, you know what? No, this is my phone. My wife's not going to be on here. I just want to see my sports content. You can certainly do that. Jump back home. There you go. Sports, no carousel, no BS. That's an option for you. DVR, again, is empty but you get that option there guide looks just like it does on tv and on the web so i do like the consistency there again up and down swiping between times favorite channels there are far left which is nice and then you can scroll left and right and see all of your channels there a nice little feature on mobile is they have this little bar at the bottom which you can jump between channels very quickly nice little feature add there you can also change the date and time here at the top clicking the calendar so that's cool you can cast to a device that has your app set up and logged into i haven't tested out that feature at all but i'd assume it works like the chromecast if you guys are familiar with that at all again search for channel or tv show or whatever so again nice little consistency feature there and then you can dive into the settings and this is where they're actually relevant going to your app settings and data usage and that's where you can select your quality by default it's actually on high you have to go in and tell it to limit your data usage um, if i can touch it there there we go now it does show you a warning that you're on data if you're not on your wi-fi network so that's on by default pretty easy to turn it off though not a whole lot to say about it that's just the ui on mobile all right conclusion time what do i think of playstation view as a whole i have no problem recommending it the streaming quality has been great. I think the pricing is fair. I like that you have the NFL Red Zone ad for 10 bucks a month, which you can obviously cancel, you know, once NFL season's over. But as far as the value, it's really going to depend on you and what you think is valuable, which sucks to say at the end of a review, right? But like, let's think about this. You've got your local channels. So that's a huge ad over something like Sling. It's kind of jinky with your, you know, antenna and then your cable channels on a different app. You know what I'm talking about if you've used Sling in the past. But yeah, it's going to depend on if you get the channels you want for an amount of money that you think is fair, which I know is not going to be the case for everybody. As far as PlayStation View against the competition, I'm going to compare it against Sling and DirecTV Now and have that video published very soon since I'm currently subscribed to all three services. So you're welcome for spending that money so you don't have to. Anyway though, that's going to about wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching to the end. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content like this in the future. And leave a comment down below. Do you have any questions about PlayStation View that maybe I didn't answer? If you have a bad experience with it, let me know that because like I said, I just saw overwhelmingly positive feedback for PlayStation View, which is why I checked it out. If your experience has sucked, let me know. I mean, I don't have any ties to PlayStation. I don't I don't care if you know somebody ripped on their service. I, I want to know legitimately. Okay, thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.